And now we turn to the next topic, which will reveal us that some hidden messages are more surprising than others. Uh, after we implemented the frequent words problem, let's apply it to real genomes. And let's start from the replication of origin in the bacterium Vibria cholera. And when we run our algorithms, it turns out there are too many potential replication origins. We actually find four frequent words. Not to mention that we don't know yet whether it's even statistically surprising to find a nightmare in a string of lens 500 that appears three or more times. So which of these four represents a real DNA box and which of them are just statistical artifacts? Well, in this case, it's actually possible to figure out which of these four candidates represent real DNA box because two of them are very special. They represent complementary, reverse complementary k-mers. And here I showed that one of them actually is a perfect reverse complement to other. You may think that I'm cheating because if you look at the red nightmares in the box, uh, uh, shown in the box, and the red nightmares shown in the bottom side of the slide, they are different. But remember, DNA has direction and strands run in opposite directions. So when we look at the string starting from TAC, red string, we should actually read it in the opposite direction, and then everything would make sense. So hidden message found. And it is extremely surprising, almost unbelievable, to find one word appearing six times, either as itself or as a reverse complement in a short string. So it reinforces our belief that we are on something. And after we've done it, let's try something else. Let's try to find hidden message in Termitoga petrophila, which is a bacteria enjoying life in a very hot environment, about 80 degrees Celsius. Maybe we should simply look for these two KMERs that we found before, but unfortunately, they are not even there. So it looks like we need to run our frequent words problem again. And in this case, we actually find six frequent words, and which tells us that probably different genomes have different hidden messages. It complicates our life quite a lot, because for thousands of bacteria, we need to search for new and new hidden messages. But with this frequent words problem, we are at least armed with this algorithms to do it for any bacteria. Now let's consult to choose which one of these six nightmares represents the real DNA box. Let's consult OriFinder software, which tells us that it looks like the one shown on this slide. And we learned, uh, therefore, how to find frequent words and hopefully DNA boxes in any bacteria. But wait a second. I told you how to find DNA A boxes as frequent uh, words if origin of replication is known. But of course, the position of the origin of replication is 500 nucleotide regions where we look for frequent words is unknown. How possibly we can find it? Remember, we have to find these 500 nucleotide regions in a genome that may be millions of nucleotides long. And let's resort, uh, resort to the idea that I call clumps or clusters of hidden messages to solve this problem. So what we were doing before, we assume that replication origin regions, maybe 500 nucleotide long, is known. And in these replication origins, we were finding frequent words. For example, in this window, we found four frequent words that appear four times. So it gives, some, gives us a hint that maybe it is a DNA box. But if we don't know replication origin, what should we do? Maybe we should look at all possible windows in the genome. And if in a particular window, we find many we find some frequent words appearing many times, it's a hint that maybe we found a replication origin. Well, let's define short or as something of length L, and many is at least T times. And that defines the notion of LT clump. 
it's a camera that appears in a window of length L at least t times. T times. And now you have a new Rosalind challenge, which is clump finding problem. You are given a stream called genome, an integer k, the length of KMR, an integer L window length, and T, number of patterns in a clump. In output, you have to find all LT clumps in the genome. And we hope that every LT clump will point us to the location of replication origin. Let's assume that you solve it, and let's run it. Let's run it on E. coli genome, the workhorse of bacterial genomics. Here's the result. We find about 2,000 potential 503 clumps, which means 500 wind lens window where there are frequent words appearing three or more times. It is just too many. It's absolutely unclear how to choose the real replication origin among them. What should we do? Should we give up? Let's try to see. Let's try to develop new ideas and see how we can move further despite the fact that we seem to be stuck.